The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. See that cute little dog in the pet store window? Chances are it came from a puppy mill. A breeding facility that forces caged, neglected, and often sick dogs to churn out puppy after puppy to be sold for profit. Meanwhile, millions of wonderful, healthy pets end up in animal shelters. This leads to the killing of more than 9,000 by the end of today. But with one simple choice, you can help. Just by deciding to adopt instead of purchase your next pet. Animal shelters are full of amazing pets looking for a home. When you adopt your new best friend, not only are you saving a life, you're taking a stand against puppy mills. When your friends see the smart choice and impact you've made, they adopt their next pet and share with five of their friends, who share with five more. Before long, thousands get involved. Pet stores stop selling dogs from puppy mills, and even more lives are saved. And with your help, we can save them all. Visit bestfriends.org slash puppy mills to learn more. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Jeremy Schapp. You may know me from ESPN's Outside the Lines and Sports Center. What you probably don't know is that I've suffered from Crohn's disease for almost 20 years. The Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of America's Take Steps, Be Heard walk program is the largest national walk program dedicated to raising funds and awareness to combat Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. To learn more about how you can help and to find a walk site near you, please visit www.cctakesteps.org. Think fast. In the short time it takes to listen to this message, a small flame can turn into a big fire. Several minutes more and thick, poisonous smoke may have filled your lungs and reduced your ability to respond. Give it five, and your entire home may be filled with flames. Keep breathing. We've got you. Don't let your world go up in smoke. Have working smoke alarms and practice an escape plan for you and your loved ones. Learn more at usfa.fema.gov, because fire is everyone's fight. Have you mixed your pain meds, your sleep meds, your allergy meds? Call the Poison Helpline. Has your child eaten a tube of toothpaste, a chip of paint, a wild mushroom? Call the Poison Helpline. Have you been bitten by a spider, a snake, an insect? Call the Poison Helpline. Poisonings can happen at the home, on the job, or in the great outdoors. Call the Poison Helpline first for fast, free advice from medical professionals. Call 1-800-222-1222 anytime, anywhere. 1-800-222-1222. Save the number, save a life. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today, 
or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. I'm Hilary Duff. As a mom, I'm proud to support the March of Dimes in helping more women have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. That's why I walk in March for Babies. The money we raise funds research and local programs that help babies overcome the challenges of premature birth and birth defects. Sign up today at marchforbabies.org. Together, we can help make healthier babies possible for thousands of families. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. state of New Hampshire is Rod Beckles. And a good Thursday morning to you, one and all, all of you Ecclesiastites and Liberty lovers all across the globe. Here it is on Thursday, April number 27 in the year of our Lord 2017. Call in number this morning is 603-835-3226. Yes, as we begin the program this morning, noting that today is, I do believe it is the start of the NFL draft season. Uh, Yeah, I don't pretend to know anything about the draft. I don't. I I like watching football. Here's one thing I've noticed over the past, I don't know, three or four years. I haven't really been following football all that closely. I mean, I I still try to pay attention to and catch a game or two of my favorite team, the Steelers, but I've sort of lost interest in watching it. I don't know why. Um, I just, uh, just haven't, it, it, I, I guess it hasn't been all that exciting. Um, I, well, I mean, to some people it's been just as exciting as ever, especially if you're a new England Patriots fan. I mean, it's, it, well, I'm not going to say that I hate the Patriots. I don't, uh, but my favorite team happens to be the Pittsburgh Steelers always has been. Um, the Pats are good. They've had, they've had, uh, their good times and their horrific times. And now they're a dynasty. And you know what Brady's Brady, he's, he's due to play. He's going to be what? 40 this year, 39 or 40. And it doesn't look like the man's going to slow down anytime soon. I mean, we've had, we've had some good quarter, solid quarterbacks playing through their forties. Um, and or until the early forties and they, and they started to wane. Um, you know, one that comes to mind is, uh, uh, the, the, the occasion from out of, uh, Wisconsin. Well, uh, he, I, I don't think, well, just, right now, I don't think there's anybody that's, that's quite as good as Brady at the quarterback position. Um, I mean, there's some potential out there for people to be real, but Brady's the best there is at the moment. Got to give the guy props. He's the best there is at the moment. Um, and it doesn't look like he's slowing down. It doesn't look like he's slowing down at all. Um, so what you're going to see, what I believe you're going to see is a lot, of, um, a lot of teams that are going to be facing off uh, against the Patriots. They're, they're going to be looking for, for defensive backs and defensive linemen that can sort of uh, better contain a, a QB like Tom Brady. Now, quarterbacks have always been um, 
the, the keystone of any football offense. And and the better your QB, the better off you know, the better your offense is. But the, you know the, there have been a lot of times where, where the QB was just not um, was it wasn't the QB wasn't the only thing. And with the Patriots, it's the same thing. The Patriots have a lot of weapons in their offensive arsenal, but the main linchpin is is really, really, I mean, everything is built off of Tom Brady. Because, well, you, you do have to build your offense off your off your uh, your quarterback. Because if you have a quarterback that can move and run, well, your offense is going to be different from a quarterback that's big big and lumbering and can't run. Um, so uh, Tom, Tom Brady is not, he's not a, he can't run. He, he has no moves. Uh, as far as running goes, he's slow. He's a big guy. What is he, like 6'4"? He's a big guy. He's not a little quarterback. Um, but he has no, he, he has no moves. He, he's, uh, he has no finesse. He can't run. And the Patriots have dealt with that before. Uh, Drew Bledsoe. Uh, Brady has Brady can move better than Bledsoe. Bledsoe was like a you know he was a, like a dead fish. Bledsoe could Bledsoe was good in his day, but Bledsoe's problem was is that he was so so you know boffo lumbering uh, that if you could contain him, he wouldn't be able to get out because he had no moves. He couldn't run. He just he just and he could not move. He was slower than molasses. Uh, that was it, that was his big downfall. If, once they figured out how to contain Bledsoe, that was it. Um, but Brady, it just seems like I, I mean he, he can't run, and so most of the time he doesn't even try. So he'll just stay there because he's so damn good and so damn accurate. He'll just pick you apart. Um, so it's hard to contain a QB like a QB that's quick with the arm. Brady's got a rifle. Uh, he's got a cannon for an arm. Um, yeah, Bled Bledsoe had a strong arm too, but you know w when you when you have a when you have a release, his release is one of the. I've heard people talk about Tom Brady's release; it's lightning fast. Uh, now, for those of you who are less initiated, that means when a quarterback has the ball and he actually starts his, the process of throwing it, it's called the release. And Brady can do it fast. I mean, he'll tuck that ball so it's protected in case he gets sacked so he doesn't fumble it. But his ability to cock his arm and throw and release that ball, which is called the release, is lightning fast. Now, I've never timed it. Um, and this is what I've just, I, I've, I've heard commentators talk about and I've you know seen a few articles written about. It. He's got a very fast release. So he's slow on the run, but he's quick on the release. So when you have somebody who's got a strong arm and a quick release, it's hard to contain him. It really is. And it, he doesn't seem to be slowing down. I mean, we're, we're always told, that, you know, yeah, well, the quarterbacks, you know, th this guy and that guy, and, you know, the older they get, uh, you know, they, 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 they're slowing down a little bit. You know, we heard that about Jerry. Remember Jerry Rice? Jerry Rice was the Peter Pan of the NFL for a while. Um, yeah, it, but, and, and, and people would make fun of him, too. You know, he said it was, his, it was his diet and his exercise regimen that kept him, his body young and, and able to compete for so long. And people used to make fun of him. And I guess Brady's got the same thing going right now. He's got he's got some new exercise, diet, nutritional plan thing. What is it, TB12 or something like that? TB12.com? I, I don't I, – I briefly saw it a couple of, couple of weeks ago. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Um, but but the, he's got some exercise equipment. I don't know if he's got any videos or with it or anything. But, you know, look, hey, whatever it is that he's doing, you can make fun of it all you want. Evidently, it's working. So, um, you know, we can continue. To, people can continue to make fun of Tom. He's the one raking in the millions of dollars a year. He's the one that's still playing at the at, at the top of his game at the age of 39 or 40. So whatever he's doing, just like Jerry Rice, whatever Jerry Rice did, worked for a very long period of time. And, um, and what you see a lot of these flash in the pan players – um, they don't take care of themselves very well, especially in the off season. <clears throat> and, um, and thus, I mean, now, now for some people in the NFL, the, the, the very position that they play is going to be cause for a, um, uh, artificially shortened 
a sports career. I mean, if you're a lineman, you know, nose tackle, defensive tackle, linebacker, you know, a decade at the most. I mean, you get out of college, what, you're 22, 23 years old. You go into the NFL when you're 20. By the time you're 30, you're done. When you're playing those those uh, up front line positions. Because it's rough on the body, man. It's just rough. Well, well, I've never played the line. I mean, I was QB and, and tight end and wide receiver. Uh, and, and, and in a few games, I was a... Um, um, defensive back, but that, but pfft, the lineman man, I, I, that's a rough, rough place to be. Um, no, it's just brutal, brutal on the body. So you don't get to last very long in those types of positions. Uh, but those guys don't get paid the most, by the way, because they're not the flashy positions. They're not the flashy, you know. They're, they're not the QBs. They're uh, they're not the the wide receivers or or the or the uh, or the backs. You know, the the halfbacks, fullbacks. Um, and, uh, you know, they're not, they're not, uh, well, defensive backs are, are basically the guys who are down the field on the, on the defense. Um, they, they take on the, um, the tight ends and wide receivers. Um, they, they tend to last longer too than anybody on the line, everybody else on the line. Cause you know, those are a little bit more flat that, that in a linebacker are the flashy positions on defense. Um, but other than that, the, 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 if you're in a non-flashy position, you're not getting paid all that much, uh, comparatively speaking. I mean, I, what is the minimum salary in the NFL? Like half a million dollars, uh, four hundred thousand, or something, something ridiculous. So six hundred? I don't know what it is. I don't particularly care. But um, so I mean, but but you're only there for you know six, eight, ten years if you're lucky in those types of positions. In in your body, it, it gets ra- your back and your knees. In those positions, take up pounding, and now we're hearing about all you know the the, the concussion brain uh, the brain damage that, that these football players are um, are suffering. But um, what was it? That, there was something I saw that um, the the days of the human football player are numbered. Yeah, somebody's looking into trying to actually make robots. You know. Isn't that what the the car? Remember anybody remember the cartoon the Jetsons? They they used to play football in the um, uh, in the Jetsons, but it was a bunch of robots, and the coaches would sit in the booths trying booths uh, trying to um, maneuver their robot players, and it's, it 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 was kind of fun. But I guess that's you know that's what some people like to do. They like to maneuver it that way, um, have some robot players for football. I don't know how brutal robot football was, w- would be. Um, then, then it would be all about the coach, not about the players, because it would you you would assume that the robots would you know all be pretty much equal. So it would be about the uh, the coach. Uh, then I mean it does because sometimes it doesn't matter how you know when it comes to humans you have an, you can have an awesome coach, but if you have players that suck, well. <laughs> Your team's gonna suck, really. I mean, you can have a highly disciplined team, but if there's just if there's no athletic talent there, they're gonna struggle, even with the world's greatest coach. Um, now they'll obviously probably do better with the world's greatest coach and the world's worst coach, but if there's no no physical talent, um, then it's gonna be difficult. Uh, but speaking of futuristic stuff, has anybody seen? The uh, uh, the new flying car. Evidently, Larry Page has a startup company where you could. Um, well, I guess he's he's taking it, it's going to they're 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 going into production for delivery um, for as little as a hundred bucks. I guess you can reserve reserve a flying car. Now, I know some people are saying, nah, it's not going to happen. Well, that's what they said about Tesla, too, and Elon Musk. Now, I know Tesla has had, has had its problems over the years, but uh, let's face it. I don't think Tesla's going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, people, I've seen them on the... Uh, Teslas are beautiful cars. They really are. I've seen them on the road here in New England. Uh, I've seen them on the highway, not just the back roads. Um, so t- Tesla's are, t- Tesla's are here. Uh, n- now we've got Tesla charging stations in New Hampshire of all places. Um, 
but uh, you know, this flying car thing by Larry Page, um, it it looks pretty cool. All it is is a mini is a mini hover craft. You know, and it's got a bunch of you know, it's a drone. It's a it's a people person sized drone is basically what it is and what it looks like, and. Evidently, you don't need a license or a pilot's license or anything to have, to fly this thing. But and people are, I guess, what the, all the video shows it over water. But um, there, I guess there are, he's got a number of different plans for this thing, and it calls for some. You know, we've had this whole notion of flying cars, real flying cars that actually work, uh, that were that were promised to be to be put in production since the '80s. All right, now I remember that one of the first flying, I mean, it was a cool looking thing. It looked like a real car that could fly, man. It was awesome. But the problem was, is government put a, put a spike, a death spike in it, in its heart because they didn't know how to classify it. Would you need a, a pilot's, private pilot's license for it? Or would you need a driver's license for it? What type of instru- infrastructure? Nobody wanted to, no government entity wanted to pony up the new infrastructure that might be required for these things. So they kind of killed it. So I'm thinking this is probably the same thing here. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna get killed. It's gonna be relegated to some recreational use thing that uh, people are gonna get bored with. But uh, but there's only so much you can do to to uh, to hold back technology. There's only so much governments can do because eventually technology just breaks out. And uh, and if they're not prepared for it, then all hell breaks loose. Well, I don't know. Who's your favorite football team, by the way? Um, I like I said I, li- I like the Steelers. It, who, who do you, who are you betting on this year? Before the draft has even started and, and come to a close, who are you betting on this year for the Super Bowl? Now, again, I'm a Pittsburgh Steeler fan, but I think if I were a betting man, I'd have to bet on the Patriots. The following program is closed captioned for the. You're listening to me, your lovable host, Elrod, here on The Rod Echo Show. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis' book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. If you love to smoke, then you know there's no place left in America where you can light up a butt these days. That's why Carnival is proud to offer our new Smoker's Cruise. You'll 
board our luxury liner and be off to, yeah, who cares where you go. The point is, you'll be in international waters where you can smoke 24 hours a day for a full two weeks. <laughs> they let us smoke on the dance floor and all our meals, even in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> I like all the <laughs> activities. <laughs> smoke alongs, cigar races. <laughs> hey, I met a babe who smokes unfiltered luckies. <laughs> the Smokers Group. Sign up now for regular or menthol. Hey, it's not just a vacation. It's the lung book. It's my friend. <laughs> the me. <laughs> now. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, you know, the uh, the NFL... I know people are saying, why is he talking about the NFL? Uh, some of the ladies out there listening, George, why is he talking about the NFL? You know, you know the, one of the, the, the fastest growing segments of, of, the, uh, of, of the NFL audience is actually women. Yeah, women are liking the NFL. I don't know. Maybe it's the... It's maybe it's the uniforms, maybe it's the pads. Because <laughs> obviously when, when, when a lot of those guys take off their, I'm sorry, it, professional athletes, most of them are just not pretty, pretty people. You know, it, you know, facially speaking, physically, they're not pretty. Anybody want to tell me that Larry Bird was pretty even when he was younger? Larry Bird was not pretty. He was not a pretty man. No, he still isn't. But um, yeah, a lot of athletes are just aren't. Most of them just start professional athletes. They're just not pretty. I don't know why that is. Just the way it is. Um, maybe because usually if you get a good-looking one that's also good at a sport, then they just really become, you know, unbearably arrogant. Um, but so if 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 they're not good-looking, that's <laughs> I guess uh, they can't be completely and totally arrogant, can they? No, I mean even 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 most people who aren't really all that good-looking think that they're good-looking enough. So. Um, j- just saying, by, by the way, uh, you know, the, the, the sports stars are also stars. Um, and speaking of stars, we've had a couple more. I mean, well, I mean, these are, these are more of the, I guess they're second tier because they're not in front of the camera kind of stars. You have the, di- the director of silence of the lamb. Remember, remember the uh, movie silence of the lamb? Yeah. Well, he's passed away as well as the author of the Zen and art, the art of motorcycle maintenance. Remember that Zen and the um, the art of motorcycle. I never read the book. I had, didn't know what it was about, but I knew it was a. I know it's a very successful book. It was a very popular book, especially when it first came out. Um, I guess it's it's a it's a humor it's a humor piece. Uh, uh, well, he is he's um, he's also passed away, and th- there was an announcement earlier this week that some people will attribute as being a death and that is Dale Earnhardt Jr. at the age of 42 will retire from racing active racing in NASCAR um he's he's getting frightened by the concussions that he's been get. I I thought that that's what they had all that helmet stuff for to prevent all that kind of whiplash and concussion and stuff you know the type of thing that his father um apparently died of in in, in, a, in a NASCAR accident wasn't the accident in itself. It was, you know, his head being whipped around. Um, and it, he, you know, forced his brain so hard to, to smack up against the inside of his skull that it killed him. Um, I, that, that's what I've been told. That's what we've all been told. So, but Aaron, and so they came up with these, these, these helmet concoctions that keep drivers heads from swishing and sloshing all around in the, in, in the, in the, uh, in the cab. Well, evidently, um, they're not working all that great because Earnhardt is use, is using the excuse of suffering too many concussions as as retiring uh, from racing, and this is what we get for, sometimes from NFL players too. You know, they talk about one too many concussions, um, and, and they and they leave they they leave the sport just just for their own safety and health. But by then, it's pro- it may be too too late, maybe. Um, I, I don't know. I don't watch NASCAR either. 
Uh, NASCAR is not my type of sport. I don't like to sit in an audience and watch a bunch of cars go around a, 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 a track that's, what, a quarter mile, mile long or something? I don't know. Just go as fast as you can and go around in an oval as fast as you can. Um, uh, but I know if you, if you watch indie races, you don't get to see much of the race. Uh, indie races, you know, they, they, they don't tend to be all, all the time. They don't tend to be in, on an oval. They tend to be like in a street somewhere. Uh, but you only get to see a small part. They, they race by you at 150 miles per hour. For, I mean, you get to see them for like five seconds. Uh, that's no fun either. But some people like it. Um, but uh, most people don't. The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved. And four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed, could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. 
You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. Back 603-835-3226. That is the number to call should you uh, wish to join me here live here on the Rod Eccles show. Uh, by the way, if you are um, if you are looking for an opportunity in the business world, business world, as they say down south, or if you're just looking for a way just to earn some extra money, you might want to consider driving with uber and i say driving with uber because you don't work for uber when you become a an uber driver you work for yourself and you set your own schedule you set your own hours Uh, if you want to go out for an hour on one day and and drive people around you can do that if you want to go out for an entire day eight twelve hours you can do that you set your own schedule uber does not tell you when you can and cannot drive um and you can make some decent money as much as, you know, 35, some people 50 bucks an hour. And now, now of course, you know, uh, rates are not guaranteed, um, but, and it depends on the area that you are driving in, uh, how popular service may be. But Uber is at just about everywhere now that, that it's legal. I know there are some places like New York State where upstate New York State, outside of New York City, I think Uber is basically illegal in the state of New York, except for New York City. Which may be changing soon. So if you're in those, and, and, and but they're, they're not allowing any ride hailing or ride sharing services to operate in New York. I, I know New York is just such a, an armpit. But if you don't live in New York State, you have the opportunity to, to, to make some decent money. There are people out there making full-time incomes by driving for Uber. They found themselves a new business. Uh, and and there are, in, depending on the areas that you live in, you, there are a number of different ways you can earn money working with uber and in some communities it's not just driving people you could drive food as well yes yes uber has has uh in some limited markets they have the ability to deliver food as well so check it out just go to rod net slash store click the uber button and you can get all the information that you need to make an informed decision about whether Uber is right for you or not, or what. And if Uber is right for you, just what part or aspect of Uber uh, you will be able to utilize best and most often. Check it out. Uh, we've got a number of different things going on in 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 the the Pacific region, as you could call it. Um. We don't have. We don't have, well. We, well, we do have a lot of friends in the in the um, in the Pacific region, but we have a lot. We have we have a lot of enemies, and, and our friends aren't so, there. Aren't so big and powerful. Um, it, it, yeah, no, no, don't get me wrong. With without Jap- Japan being a friend of ours is is extremely important. Uh, the fact that we're that the Philippines is slipping away from us is a sad. Now maybe this will turn around with Trump, but Obama was pretty much just tossing the Philippines out out the with the garbage. Now Trump may may bring them back to the fold. The Philippines was once a um, a territory of the U.S. By the way, um, now when did we, we we won it? Which war did we win the Philippines? I don't remember. Um, my historical brain is not activated 
this morning to go that far back. But uh, in any case, you know, we, we obviously because we're so benign, we're not a we're not a uh, colonial type of power. We don't keep um, we don't keep the, the possessions that we win in war. We set them free. Uh, a number of nations know this, that when we conquer them and beat them in war and in battle, Germany, Japan, Germany, um, Austria, Hungary, uh, uh, the Philippines, uh, the, uh, well, well, we kept Puerto Rico. Um, uh, yeah, we kept parts of, you know, supposedly we, we kept parts of me- old Mexico. But they're, they're, well, we didn't actually take all of the territory that Mexico lost over the centuries. Um, now, some of it just came came to the United. Well, Texas, we didn't we didn't take Texas. Texas took Texas um, and became the Republic of Texas. And the Republic of Texas decided to join the Union. So we didn't do you know. So Americans didn't really do that. Texans did that a long time ago. But there was no colonial type of atmosphere. And every time we you know even places that we spend a lot a lot of money in. Uh, we end eventually turn over to the to the native peoples there. Panama, anybody? You know, we we spent the 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 blood and money in Panama, and but you know, twenty years ago or so, we turned it over to them. Yeah, here you go. We spent all this money, you know, building it and maintaining it, and you know, yeah, some of your people who worked in the construction detail died, but some of our people who worked in construction detail died too. Uh, but here you go. No no charge. Yeah, we spend all that money and then we just turned it over. But that's what we do a lot. You know, Iraq, Afghanistan, we didn't, you know, intend to to make a United States state in Iraq. Did No, we turned it back over to the Iraqi people uh, because we're not a colonial power. We're not into colonizing around the globe. Um, but so it is. But it is very important that we keep friends in parts of the world, in 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 Asia, it's important that we have, uh, well, some call it the semicircle. <laughs> Excuse me, the semicircle, which is um, very important, and that would be, uh, you know, the Philippines, Japan, and South Korea. Now, the re- well. The, we know for a, that, historically speaking, that our West Coast can be vulnerable if we let it. And in order to keep our West Coast safe, yeah, we have to have friends out there in that part of the world. And if you look at the map, basically what it for, form uh, it formulates is 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 almost if you were to connect the dots, basically it forms like a smile, a semicircle between the Philippines. Japan and North Korea and that that it's like a wall or barrier between our west coast and who China now the problem with that is is that it's not a full circle we don't you know well well a full even a full half circle it's not a full circle there, there are some breaks in in that in that smile, if you will. Like if you go just north of Korea, then you hit North Korea. So it kind of gives you that that it, well, I guess North Korea is the pimple uh, on the face of the earth over there. So now we have this this huge issue all of a sudden with North Korea. Now, now, a lot of people think, well, this is just coming up and it's all because of Trump. No, it's not because we've had troubles with North Korea since the Korean War, by the way, in the 50s. Anybody that, well, a lot of people just don't remember that. Well, they weren't around. They weren't alive. They don't teach it in school. They don't teach it. It's the Forgotten War. I mean, what people always hear about is World War II. And then for some reason, somehow we just, you know, we had all this peace in between and then we went to the Vietnam War. Well, no, there was a major, major conflict that threatened to drag us into World War III because there were a lot of nasty players. And and, and understand, China was heavily involved. The early stages, you know, with with Mao and all his, his wonderful people, they were involved early in the Korean War. They were involved. They were part, just like Vietnam. You know, Vietnam, Vietnam was was not so much a um, a proxy war with Russia and, and communism 
as it was a proxy war with China, because that's who that's who was backing Vietnam. Now, it's kind of interesting that Vietnam really their relationship with China has soured over the years. And Vietnam has actually looked towards the West uh, and the United States. Um, yeah, I don't know what what was said or what happened over there to sour that relationship, but they're, they're not as friendly as they used to be. And evidently, the same thing has happened with the Chicoms and the Norks. The, 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 the Chicoms seem to have lost control of the Norks over there. And uh, that makes Kim Jong-un a very unstable and very... Everybody talks about how unpredictable Donald Trump is. Let me tell you who's unpredictable, and that's Kim Jong-un. Little fat boy over there. Um... And, and and this guy, I don't, you know, just now, now maybe it's just perception that we've gotten from him, but we have U.S. commanders uh, that are now warning Donald Trump and warning this, uh, you know, all 100 members of the U.S. Senate that Kim Jong Un is not scared to fail. I mean, let's face it, he's got to know that if he makes a move, he's going to get his ass beat. He's going to get trounced. It, not just by the United States. I'm not, I'm not so sure China is not going to feel threatened itself and take him out. We may not have to. I I, I mean, it, you know, Kim Jong-un is, is, is getting, if they, if they can't control, if the Chinese can't control him, I mean, let, let's be honest here. If they don't feel that they can control him, if they feel that some of their cities, that they've spent a lot of time and money in building up, if they feel that those cities are in danger or are being threatened by Kim Jong Un and his 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 nonsense, I don't think the Chinese will hesitate in taking him out. And if you think that that you know it would be a it would be a sort of a cakewalk for the United States to do it, I mean, if China brings its weight down with with its army, I it it would it, they would crush him. And they would know where to where to look for him too. Uh, he can go and hide in his bunkers from the United States, and we we might not be able to find where that bunker is at at least for a while. Uh, I think the Chinese know where they all are because they help build build them. Um, so he's not he wouldn't be safe from that. I think if anybody's gonna is gonna talk this guy off the off the off the ledge, it is gonna be the Chinese. They're finally they're gonna have to finally either get to him or get rid of him. I think it's going to come down to that. Now, I may be wrong, but I think that's who's really going to end up taking him out. I don't think it's going to be us. Although we see everybody seems to all of a sudden be talking about potentially nobody. Well, nobody's talking about it. Uh, you don't hear the talking heads. The news isn't really thinking that this is important. Look, this guy's a nut job. He probably has a nuclear weapon already. No, he probably can't deliver it on, an, on, on, on the likes of a rocket or an ICBM, but he's got a nuclear weapon. There's nobody out there that is saying that conclusively that he doesn't have one. Everybody's talking about him getting the ability to put it on an ICBM type of a missile and, and, and fling it thousands of miles away from him and hitting somewhere. So, in other words, nobody's saying that he doesn't have it. Everybody's getting away from the talk about him not having a nuclear. So, in other words, Kim Jong-un, most likely, thanks to, thanks to uh, Russia via Iran, and now Russia is, is also moving military might to the Korean border, uh, with their border with North Korea. It's, just, it's, it's a mess over there. But sharing technology with, with Iran, thanks to... Obama, it is all but certain that North Korea has a nuclear weapon. And as poor as that nation is, somehow this these dictators, Kim, Kim Jong-un and his dad before him, Kim Jong-il, um, they were able to find, find money to build, maintain, and staff their massive army. Where are they getting the money to do this? Oh, I, well, I, yeah, great. They can print their own money. I get, I get it. But and, and pay people with, yeah. 
and since everything is price controlled there, you know, they can keep down inflation. But the, the, the point is it, it takes, you know, the stuff that they don't have themselves, they have to get from outside. They have to buy and pay for. So the question is, is where are they getting the money for? Well, I mean, one, one of the things that, that happens is you get a weak leader like Obama that, that lets them earn the money. Well, it's going to be a little bit tougher now. I mean, I know there are some people out there saying, well, China is still kind of friendly. Really? Uh, China just sent back all the coal that they used to buy from North Korea. That was a that was a big, big money maker for North Korea. China is now buying that coal from the United States. Don't, don't you think that pisses off Kim Jong Un? He's he's kind of, he's kind of like you know it's kind of like drugs. You cut off the the customer, and uh, they're they're not going to get mad at the customer. They're going to get at, mad at the at the person who cut off the customer. You know, they don't expect the customer to be all that loyal. And so they would expect there to not be any competition. That's how they get loyalty, is by restricting competition. So all of a sudden, now the United States, uh, you know, China's open relationships bigger with the United States after meeting with Trump. They reject Korean coal and take American coal. That's not making them happy either. So there, there's this whole notion that we've got to pay attention to in North Korea. And no, I don't think the American media, the lamestream media, is actually paying enough. You know, we get more coverage on ESPN laying off 100 people than we do about coverage about what's going on in North Korea. Hey, the president just did something really odd yesterday for a president. He called up to, up to the White House all 100 senators for a briefing. And I got to tell you, almost all the senators went. I I, I didn't find out which senators didn't go, but almost all of them went. And for all of them, including Democrats, none of them are talking bad about Trump against North Korea right now, are they? Makes you wonder what the hell they were told. Hello, America. It's me, your history. I remember a time when we thumbed our nose in a king's face and sent him packing. And when fascists and emperors talked a little bit too loud, we showed up, tore their cities to the ground, and then rebuilt them just to prove we could. We put men on the moon, we won a cold war, and we elected fearless leaders who led fearless people. What the hell happened to you, America? Back in my day, we didn't elect a big-eared community organizer. We punched him in the kidney. Maybe it's time you came home, America. Home where you belong. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement on Amazon.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800 595 2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595 2614 to take your call now. Call 800 595 2614. That's 800 595 2614. Again, 800 595 2614. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand, and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must-read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past, and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. 
Available online at Westbow Press, Amazon, Books a Million, Barnes and Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a long-haired young person came into our bank and said to me, I bet you won't lend me money to buy an electric guitar. Well, he was making $100 a week, and he was over 18, and I said, I bet you I will lend you money to buy an electric guitar. And I did. So what happens? The punk gets busted for possession of dangerous drugs, and we're out 350 bucks. There's one thing about kids nowadays... You don't have to give them credit. Universal Bank. We trust you. About as far as we can throw you. Call Rod now. 603-835-3226. Lines are open. Welcome back, 603-835-3226. One of the things you need to understand about what is going on in Washington, D.C. and what is gone, going on in uh, the capitals in the, in the Asia East is that, uh, that Kim Jong-un has got people's attention, except for some of our political members here. Now, for instance, from what I'm gathering right now, 99 senators out of 100 went up to the White House to get a briefing. The one lone standout was none other than Vermont's Bernard Sanders. Yes, Crazy Bernie didn't go. Why? Because he didn't, and I quote, didn't want to be a part of the White House roadshow. So we're talking about a serious issue. We know that Kim Jong-un is rattling his saber up, up there in North Korea viciously. We know he's got a mighty military. I mean, you, you, I'm, it could be it could be of you know World War II quality for the equipment, but it's nothing to sneeze at when you've got a million men are a million man army and in and, and a few thousand tanks and a few thousand artillery pieces, uh, long range artillery guns that can bombard a, 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 a town or a city. You know, within a few mile, you know, a few miles away from from their uh, from their positions, it's nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, we might. Sure, they may have antiquated and outdated fighter aircraft that we could take them all down, but I mean, it's still nothing to sneeze at. And plus, he's probably he's got the ability to have. He's got rockets. We know he's got rockets. He's got the ability to launch at least short short range missiles that would have the ability to hit Seoul, Korea. Seoul, South Korea. Again, we're talking millions of people in the in, in the way of this of Kim Jong Un's missiles. Even if his technology is limited, he still has that range. This is not a road show. Bernie Sanders thinks this is a road show. And so MSNBC, the MS mess is throwing him up talking and Bernie's talking about how much of a road show and nobody's going to learn anything. And Kim Jong-un is not all that. Bad. I mean, are you kidding me? And then you got CNN running around talking about, oh, none of the senators say that they learned anything. Well, if it is a secret high level briefing that the, that the White House only wanted to be able to give at the White House. Do you think the senators are going to come out of that meeting and tell you every damn little detail that they learned? Oh, well, evidently CNN thinks that you that they should have because since they didn't tell every little detail that they learned, they didn't learn much. And so that gives fuel to Bernie Sanders saying, well, you know, it was a road show. I'm sorry, folks, this is not a road show. But what it is, it is Bernie Sanders being shown for the nut job he is. Now, now keep in mind, this is the guy that the Democrats want to turn over the Democratic Party to. This is the guy, him, him and his, his minions out there who are the snowflakes. They want to turn the Democrat Party over because they think that Bernie Sanders is the way for them to win. Well, Bernie Sanders doesn't even understand a real threat when he sees one. So is he really the guy to make, make your, your party a, a winner again? Have you ever thought to yourself, I'm a leftist elite Hollywood a-hole? 
If so, good news. The Rod Eccles Hollywood Community College is now open, featuring such courses as Unemployment is not paid vacation. No, Americans don't want to spend $19 for an order of french fries and the ever-popular Shut the Hell Up. Why, just listen to this big-time celebrity endorsement. I'm not Rosie O'Donnell, and I think this school's offensive, sexist, and racist. And I think you're a giant a-hole who needs to shut the hell up. Hey, we teach a course in that. The Rod Eccles Hollywood Community College, where being an a-hole is not a guarantee you'll be an A student. Thousands of families affected by disasters, like the recent wildfires, urgently need support. You can help the American Red Cross provide warm meals, shelter, and hope to families when they need it most. Please donate today to Red Cross Disaster Relief to help people affected by disasters, big and small. Go to redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. Your support is critical. We can't do it without you. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. Were you born from 1945 to 1965? People born during these years are five times more likely to have hepatitis C. So even if you try to eat right, exercise, and take care of yourself, you could still have hepatitis C, a serious disease that's a leading cause of liver cancer. If you were born from 1945 to 65, you should get a blood test for hepatitis C. Treatments can cure this disease. Talk to your doctor about getting tested. A message from the CDC. Think fast. In the short time it takes to listen to this message, a small flame can turn into a big fire. Several minutes more, and thick, poisonous smoke may have filled your lungs and reduced your ability to respond. Give it five, and your entire home may be filled with flames. Keep breathing. We've got you. Don't let your world go up in smoke. Have working smoke alarms and always stay in the kitchen when cooking at high temperatures. Learn more at usfa.fema.gov, because fire is everyone's fight. Have you mixed your pain meds, your sleep meds, your allergy meds? Call the Poison Helpline. Has your child eaten a tube of toothpaste, a chip of paint, a wild mushroom? Call the Poison Helpline. Have you been bitten by a spider, a snake, an insect? Call the Poison Helpline. Poisonings can happen at the home, on the job, or in the great outdoors. Call the Poison Helpline first for fast, free advice from medical professionals. Call 1-800-222-1222 anytime, anywhere. 1-800-222-1222. Save the number, save a life. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Premature birth is the number one killer of babies. Those who survive often face birth defects and complications that affect them for life. For hundreds of thousands of families in the United States, this is the hardest thing they will ever have to face. And it's even harder on the baby. March of Dimes is providing education and support to families and funding life-saving research to give every baby a fighting chance. You can help. Do something today. Give them tomorrow at marchadimes.org slash tomorrow. It's pretty amazing when you consider that seven years ago, we didn't have the treatments we have now. We cure 80% of children with cancer. Go back 50 years, we were curing 20 to 30%. This is the miracle story of modern medicine. We understand what makes this cancer tick. And of course, without donors from around the world, this just couldn't happen. And there's one thing we're focused on, and that's beating this thing. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. Not on my watch, our military service members say, as they volunteer to serve, as they move out, stand firm, and take fire. So not on our watch, we say, to the severely ill or injured veterans who can't get the care they deserve to live full and independent lives, even when there's no government funding or a nursing home seems like the only option. We won't leave one warrior behind. Not on our watch. Join us at findwwp.org. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations 
to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. America's wounded warriors are coming home. After serving on foreign shores, these brave men and women are returning to their families and communities. Many have wounds you can see, and many have wounds you can't see, like post-traumatic stress disorder. Now that these warriors are back home, they are ready to enter the civilian workforce. To help, Wounded Warrior Project has developed the Warriors to Work program a career counseling service that helps warriors translate their military experience to the civilian workplace. These extraordinary men and women bring proven world-class job skills and a unique perspective on teamwork to the job. And to ensure the right warrior finds the right job, Wounded Warrior Project works with employers to find just the right match. When you hire a wounded warrior, you hire an intelligent, talented, and committed new employee. Contact Wounded Warrior Project at findwwp.org. Welcome home, the brave. You want to know what time it is? It's time to bring the rain. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. Somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire is Rod Beckles. Yes, indeed. Welcome back. It is I, your lovable host. Welcome to all you liberty lovers and ecclesiastites all across the globe as well. Call in number this morning, this Thursday morning, April number 27th in the year of our Lord 2017 is 603-835-3226. That's a number that you can utilize anytime during the broadcast. That you, if you so desire. You know, one of the um, um, interesting things going on out there about this all-important senator briefing. And um, now now all, all the senators were whisked up to the White House from Capitol Hill via a motor coach. Now, Now, just as a side note, I wonder if they showed a movie during the trip from the Capitol to the White House in the motor coach. Um, yeah, well, how many passengers is those? Can they hold 100 people? Buses don't hold that many people, right? Can they? I don't know. Well, it's a coach, motor coach. So, But I'm sure each senator probably had to have, you know, there's, there's their own staff, you know, whatever. They couldn't go alone, I'm sure. But any in any case... Uh, what you have is you have a lamestream media that can't even get the facts right. Now, what am I talking about? Well, <laughs> well, I just to- told you Bernie Sanders didn't go. MSNBC had uh, had him on the air talking about why he didn't go. But the L.A. Times is out there saying all 100 senators head to the White House. And it's and, and and they still don't even get that part correct, because CNN's reporting that senators learn little during short all rare all hands on deck North Korea briefing, but ABC News says senators describe long and detailed White House briefing on North Korea informative and important. Even the lamestream media can't get the story straight. Hey, no wonder some people are confused. Did all the senators go? Well, no, Bernie Sanders didn't go. 
But wait, but the LA Times said all 100. Is is there are there 101 senators? No, there's still only 100 senators. And Bernie Sanders was on MSNBC saying why he didn't go because he thought it was a he thought it was a a a, a trick, a road show as he calls it. And of course, then CNN, the Clinton News Network, you know, the wonderful fake news network that CNN is, is saying, oh yeah, senators didn't learn a damn thing. It was a waste of time. You know, Bernie Sanders is probably right. It was, it was nothing. But then ABC reports, yeah, all the senators are saying it was an important briefing. I wonder if it was such a dog and pony show, why haven't any of the, the uh, dog and pony type of senators from the Democrat Party come out and talked about how, how wa- much of a waste of time it was. Now, maybe we still will hear from Chuck Schumer about how much of a waste of time it was. But they didn't run to the, the, to the cameras right after the meeting and say, what a waste of time. No, everybody was saying this was a long and detailed briefing on North Korea. I mean, evidently, you even had, I mean, you got some generals out there now saying, hey, Hawaii is now threatened by North Korea. In fact, the threat to Hawaii is so real that we need to move our missile shield or missile defenses capabilities to Hawaii. Now, that's a surprise to me because I already thought we had some sort of Patriot missile or THAAD anti-missile defense system in Hawaii. Evidently, we don't. Because they're recommending that we move batteries of these systems there. Well, I, I don't know about you, but what was Obama doing over the past eight years? Did he have his thumb up his ass or something? I don't, I don't get it. How do you, leave, if not, ju- if not for any reason whatsoever, just out of the historical significance of what has happened in Hawaii, you would at least have some sort of at least shell of a missile defense system in Hawaii. Evidently, there's nothing there. I don't know why. Well, we still have a, a major naval station there. I mean, it is our most uh, westward, westward slash eastward uh, uh, outpost that is ours. And it's stuck out there all by its lonesome. And it isn't well defended? What was Obama doing? Now, according uh, to U.S. Pacific Forces Commander Admiral Harry, uh, Harry Harris Jr. Yes, I know, try to say that ten times fast. Harry Harris Jr., He said that the Pentagon needs to consider deploying new anti-ballistic missile systems and a defensive radar to Hawaii to protect against a growing threat from North Korea. Again, we don't already have a system in place. Is this something that the senators learned at the briefing? Hey, guess what, guys? Um, Obama left Hawaii wide open. There is no real defense system in place in Hawaii right now. We need to do something about that, okay? Okay. I mean, other than, uh, well, I'm, I'm not a military expert and I don't play one on TV, but I would tend to believe that I, I, even I know that Hawaii is, is an important asset to the United States in many, many different ways. And, and to leave it basically defenseless is criminal. To me, that's criminal. We, I, I bet you. Well, I mean, well, well, yeah, we've got, we've got, you know, missile defense systems in play to protect Washington D.C. Uh, what about the rest of the country? What about the rest of us? I mean, any, anything to, to protect New York City? No. How about L.A., Boston, Chicago? Not that I know of. You know, any missile defense systems or any other type of defense systems in place to, to protect our, our, our energy infrastructure down in Texas or in the Dakotas? No. <clears throat> Hell, I mean, look, liberals don't even want to put up a border wall to protect, you know, the, the border states from an infiltration of, of, of potential illegal immigrants who are terrorists. No, no, no. It's all, it's all about the Mexican. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a racist thing against the Mexican. 
And I know that we talk a lot about, you know, the, uh, the Latino illegal immigrant, but that's not the, that's not the reason. That is not the reason to continue to want to build the wall. Well, first of all, there are two main reasons. I said, well, hey, you know, we hear from the left. Well, you know, it, it, you hear from some people in some places, the illegal crossing is down at like 90%, so we don't need the wall. Yeah, we do need the wall. Well, why do you still need the wall? Well, we need the wall in case we elect somebody, and we will, this country will elect some idiot again. When we elect some idiot who won't enforce the laws of the land and just let a flood of people across, like Obama. That's why we need the wall. Be- and not because of these people uh, uh, that come here that drain our economy and the taxpayer of, of valuable resources and money. That's not the main reason. The main reason is we know for a fact because we've already caught some. Now, if we've caught some, we know some got through. Illegal immigrants crossing the border were terrorists or belonged to terrorists or had sympathies to terrorist organizations. They're not all Latino folks. That's the point. They're not all Latinos. They're not all Mexicans and Guatemalans crossing the border. And frankly, it doesn't take many of them to do to look, look, you know, ever since 9-11, well, were there 29 of them? 29, uh, you know, terrorists, supposed terrorists killed over three, 3,000 American people, citizens on 9-11. And ever since then, you know, we've had a bunch of, we've had a bunch of uh, uh, loners that, that have taken, taken their guns and gone out in, in, in either uh, a single or a duo and done some major, one person took out nearly 50 people in Florida for crying out loud. So how many lone wolves do you want to let across the border? Really? Are you willing to take that, that risk and that chance? Well, of course not. But there, there are people that, that in Washington that want to play fast and loose with your security and your safety. And now we have military personnel telling us, hey, you know, you know, this guy in North Korea, he's the real deal. He's a total nut job. He doesn't have any fear of failure. I mean, he's most likely, he most likely knows that he is going to lose and fail, but he doesn't care. He has no fear of that. He's going to go, go down in history in the, in the Korean people's mind as some glorious godlike figure on the planet that took on the big enemy of the United States and its allies, and he defeated them. Even though he lost, he still defeated them, and he showed them what's what. He's a nut job that is willing to do anything. And that that puts a lot of Americans and our allies in danger, and we do not have anything in place to protect the people. People are assets. We don't have anything in place. Evidently, if we had something in place, and he wouldn't, then the uh, uh, the the U.S. Pacific Forces Commander Admiral Harris wouldn't be suggesting or asking for defensive radar systems and anti ballistic missile systems to be moved to Hawaii. I mean, we're we're moving we're moving the THAAD system into North or into South Korea. We're not moving anything, anything into Hawaii. I don't know. Does Japan have its own system? You know, they do have to, on a lighter note, Japan does have to fend off Godzilla from time to time, so they should have something on their own, right? I mean, is that, is that what some people think? I mean, here, not, not that Japan is, is completely innocent, but here's a, here's a country that ever since World War II has been very much benign. They have no offensive capabilities or very little offensive capabilities as far as its military is concerned. Uh, But there are still people in the region that hate Japan. How the hell do you hate the Japanese? Yeah, I mean, sure, they've become an an economic powerhouse in the East, but they don't do anything else. Really. They don't really get involved in foreign affairs, anybody, uh, foreign affairs anywhere, not even close to them. I well, I mean, even 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 the South Koreans and Japanese have a you know minor dis- discrepancies and and things that go on in in the territories that that uh, that border each 
each of the nation nations. Um, but it's like everybody still hates the Japanese. And the Japanese are sitting there thinking, "What? Well, why us? We didn't do anything. We haven't done anything since World War II. You kicked our butts, and we, you know, we went, uh, we went, and became the good guys. And now North Korea wants to attack us too. What the hell's going on here?" So you got to ask exactly how we let these kind of see when when we let these tyrants exist, when we let them uh, foment. They come back to bite us later on. We like to say, well, they're no big deal. They're no problem. You know, they're not going. And it seems like eventually we have to, we have to take care of them. And it seems like that when we finally get around to taking care of them, it costs us more in blood and treasure than if we would have taken care of them right off the bat. I, you know, if we would have taken care of, uh, you know, of, of Iran when we had the chance back in the, back in the 80s under Carter, yeah, we wouldn't have the problem with Iran. If we would have taken care of Saddam Hussein but, but when he started, before he got too big for his britches, we wouldn't have had Desert Storm and, and, um, and, and, and Enduring Freedom. If we would have taken care of the Soviet Union when Patton said, let's not stop World War II right now, let's go in and take care of the Russians, we wouldn't have had, what, 50 years of the Cold War. And I don't know how many people might be alive today. So when it comes to North Korea, are you really willing to let this tyrant go on, get bigger and badder until he gets a nuclear weapon that is capable of hitting the United States mainland and then trying to go in and taking care of him instead of taking care of him now. One way or the other, we're going to have to. You're listening to The Rod Eccles Show, the coolest, most politically incorrect, conservative black man on the planet. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars. healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis' book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books a Million, Barnes and Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. Hi, Gordon. What you been up to? Big things, Fred. I'm a full-time student at bartending college. Wow. I never had time for a formal education. Well, I decided to make time, but it's not easy. Bartending college is a four-week course. Gee, how far along are you? Well, let's see. This is Tuesday, the third week. Hey, I'm a junior, and I'm late for a daiquiri lecture. Why don't you join me? Why not? Bartending college. You've already spent enough time on the other side of the bar to qualify for enrollment. Bartending college. We'll teach you everything you need to know. You'll get a starter set of bartenders jokes like... So I says to the guy, you can stay, but the cow's gotta go. <laughs> Bartending college. You'll learn how to roll drunks, water the liquor, and skim the cash register. And remember, as the bartender, you drink for free. For free. free. Last call for integrity.
603-835-3226. Welcome back. Uh, th- this, this whole thing that has to do with Hawaii and it has to do with our, our defensive capabilities of defending the American people is very serious stuff. Now, according to um, General Harris, Kim Jong-un is clearly in a position to threaten Hawaii today, in my opinion. Uh, excuse me, not General, Admiral. Did I say General Harris? Admiral Harris. Uh, he's the, the, the chief of U.S. Pacific Command, and he told the House Armed Services Committee, I have suggested that we consider putting interceptors in Hawaii that defend directly and that we look at a defensive Hawaii radar. The U.S. currently has anti-missile interceptors at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California and at Fort Greeley in Alaska. And, uh, well, it should be out there in Hawaii, too. It's not hard to, you know... From a radar in, in space standpoint and, and using, you know, coordinates, it's not hard to find Hawaii. I mean, I know it's stuck out there in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, uh, but when it comes to needing to find it, it's not hard to locate. Not anymore. Maybe at one point it used to be, but it's not hard to locate now. And, and, and we need to really understand that Kim Jong-un is a complete and total and utter Nut job. Yeah, and, and well, maybe it's not. Maybe he's just a. Maybe he's just a happy-go-lucky fat boy. Uh, maybe. He he might. Uh, you know he. <laughs> you know, he's just a. He's just a happy-go-lucky kind of fat boy, and somebody else is pulling his strings and is actually ruling. You know, ruling the country from behind the scenes. I I don't know, but. Um, it, if you ever look at pictures of him, it doesn't look like it looks like he's in full control. He do, he he doesn't look like a nice person. Um, well, he doesn't. I'm, he, he just doesn't. He's and he's obviously a very rotund, robust. He likes to eat too. I know if I if I were to say that in, in North Korea, it would be cause for me to be taken away um, and put in their their version of a gulag. The senators have also been told that North Korea nuclear threat is urgent. Uh, so the Senate took part in a rare White House briefing, according to Free Beacon, on Wednesday yesterday to hear what uh, hear what senior leaders described as an urgent national security threat posed by North Korea's nuclear and missile programs. Combine that with you know you have a military military brass that says. They pose, North Korea poses a threat to Hawaii. And you got to be asking yourself, well, if we have all of this stuff being out there, out there that is in the public eye, what is it that the public is not being told about North Korea? What, what exactly is not, not being, I mean, I mean, this is, look folks, I mean, I mean, this is something that really needs to, needs to be brought to light, needs to be discussed. You have got Russia and China putting man and and machinery, war machinery, on the border with North Korea. You have got Asian nations like Australia and Japan sending ships to join the U.S. Armada, and the U.S. sending not one, but possibly three carrier strike groups to the region. You have Seoul, Korea, and Japanese uh, governments telling their people, be prepared for an attack. You only have a five- or ten-minute warning. Something's going to happen, folks. I don't know where it's going to come from first. I don't know who's going who's to strike first. I don't even know if it's going to be the U.S. that strikes back. But this is, they are now isolating this guy. And when you isolate people like this, it's akin to backing an animal into a corner. China's no longer buying coal from them. What else is China not getting from, from North Korea that they used to get? I mean, coal is one thing. I don't know what else they, they, they could have possibly been, been giving Kim Jong-un money for. What do you think he was getting the money to, to, to maintain his army? Now he doesn't have that. What else is he not getting? 
There's other economic sanctions right now that, that the U.N. and the United States have put on, on North Korea. So what else is, is Kim Jong-un not getting? We are, we are forcing him into a corner. And we know what happens with wild animals when you corner them. They become extremely vicious. Now, they usually end up losing, but not before they do an awful lot of damage to the predator. So, uh, I is any nobody's taking this seriously. Our lamestream media is not taking this seriously. Snowflakes are not taking this seriously. We are on the precipice of war here, people. And nobody, it seems, in the United States is taking it seriously. Hello? Call, 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 call Rod now. 6666 The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved. And four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. 
it's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful. Woo! There you go, buddy. The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. I'm not Rod Eccles, and I approve this message. Six is the call-in number. A little bit of a Latin uh, bonita style dancing there. Yes, I can. I can see Selma Hayek and Antonio Banderas dancing to that kind of stuff. I maybe not Selma. Who else would there be? M- maybe uh, maybe uh, Meredith Vier- uh, Vierga. I can never pronounce her name. Um, Maybe she would be better a better pairing with Antonio Banderas. Maybe. She's a pretty lady. She really she really is. Um yeah, you know, the uh the the trophy wife of what is she on? Mo- um Modern Family? Yeah, yeah, Modern Family. That's that's the And she does the she does the head and shoulders commercials now, right? I'm not buying it. I don't. I don't. None of those stars uh, use, utilize that the cheap hair products that the nobody's hair turns out looking like theirs does just using those products. I defy anybody. Uh, show me. Prove it to me. Without a prof- <laughs> without a professional. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. Well. I, 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 uh, yeah, yes, Desperado, uh, super fan Dom is reminding me that, uh, Desperado is one of his favorite movies with Antonio Bandera. I happen to like Desperado too. And the, and the, uh, the, um, um, the Mexican stories, once upon a time in Mexico stories and his brothers with the, they had the guitar cases. One had a machine gun, another had a rocket launcher and a guitar. That was just badass. <laughs> Those were macho. And uh, what was it? Assassins with Sylvester Stallone. Yet one of my favorite movie lines of all time. No more chit chat. Let's play. Uh, that was Antonio Banderas delivering those lines. Um, yeah, he was. <laughs> he's, but he just, he also seems like he's a very nice guy. I, I've heard that a lot of nice things about an Antonio Banderas, specifically, you know, as a regular person. I don't know why he was why he was with Melanie. Was it Melanie Griffith that he was married to for a little while? Yeah, I think it's Melanie Griffith, right? Well, one of those '80s female stars. But um, yeah, so and and Antonio and Meredith dancing. That that would be a Dancing with the Stars. How come they don't get Antonio Banderas to be on Dancing with the Stars? I'd watch Dancing with the Stars then. It, you know, I've never seen an episode of Dancing with the Stars. I've never seen one. I've seen a few segments here and there, but I've never seen an episode of Dancing. It does not interest me. It just, it, uh, I'd watch it if Antonio, if they got Antonio Banderas. Uh, maybe he's not, he's not enough of a has been yet. I guess I don't know. 
Ooh, did I see all the stars and, and were has-beens who were on? I don't know. I don't watch it. It just seems to me that if you're if you're a big time act, excuse me, active star now, you don't have time to do that. I could be wrong, um, but because I don't watch it, so I don't I don't know who's been on it really. Um, I just don't watch dancing. Sorry, I don't watch dancing. But now there's a new program that that is being hyped like you would not believe, and it's being hyped so much that now I'm going to have to at least watch the first episode. Uh, Hulu. I mean, every t- everywhere I look, I'm getting getting the, the the stuff in my email. I'm I'm seeing commercials on what little TV I w- I watch. I get the commercials of it. I I see it come across in in my in my newsfeed on some social media. The Handmaid's Tale, or whatever story, whatever that is, on Hulu. It's a, it's a Hulu original, and I'm seeing so much of it, and people are talking about it. So I guess I'm going to have to go in this weekend and watch an episode or two of it and see what it's see what it's all about. But um, I don't know what it's about. I'm confused. I mean, I've seen the, the some of the previews and thinking, well, it's you know like the old style clothing, you know, pilgrimish type of clothing. So it's probably taking place in the 16 or 1700s or something like that. But no, I see modern stuff. They're in a modern time in a modern city, you know, today. And I'm, I'm confused. I don't know. What, I don't, I, I, I guess it's from a book or a series of books. I've never read them, never heard of them. So I'm a little confused as, as to what this is all about. So I guess I'm going to have to, Watch an episode or two to find out. Well, I'll get to the bottom of it for you. I will get to the bottom of it. I promise. And then I will report back to you uh, I'll, I'll, re- I'll re- report back to you what, it, what, it's, what it's all about. Um, but um, because I, I don't know what Handmaid's Tale is all about. Sometimes you can figure out the pulse of what is going on by the movies and television programs that are out there. Now, I find it interesting um, that we have <laughs> that, that we have this TV program with Kiefer Sutherland. Uh, um, what is it? Designated Survivor. Now, now, again, I have not watched an episode, but uh, of this particular. Series and I keep saying I'm gonna I'm going to do so because because it is tantalizing, uh, it is titillating, as well because of who's in the White House now and how all that came about and what people ha- were saying leading up to the inauguration you know pre inauguration and post inauguration of Donald Trump uh, about the secession uh, or excuse me succession of of the presidency should Donald Trump not be able to live up to his duties and and you had some people that thought they were they were next in line, and they obviously they didn't read the Constitution, or they'd find out that they were not nowhere near next in line, but or, or got the got the succession wrong um, uh, somehow. But it, it's just kind of interesting that that this whole, and I know there are, there are probably a lot of people in this country that would like to try to start over. Just just get rid of Congress, all of them. And start over. Well, that's basically what happens, in, from what I understand, in Designated Survivor. There is no government. I, I, I'm, I'm guessing I, I'm going to have to watch it to, to really f- find out. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, but it's kind of interesting that, that, it, that that's a kind of show. And it, I, evidently it's a hit. So it's kind of interesting that we're now in this type of a circle where this type of thing is a hit. Now, one of the other hits that, that was a surprise hit in this country, I don't know why, why it was a surprise, was House, House of Cards, which is due to its latest season, I guess, starts next sometime next month. May 10th, I think, is the uh, premiere release date. But again, there, there's so much, there was so much in the House of Cards that predicted, you could say, what was happening um, – in real life, because a lot of the, well, obviously all that stuff was was written and filmed before the actual events took place. So it'll be interesting to see what this season brings us, because the season has been, you know, the filming has been wrapped for months. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what House of Cards has to show us. But I just, 
if if you want to know what's going really going on or going down, may, you know, sometimes we have to look at at Hollywood. Hollywood sometimes tells us, you know, we we always hear this stuff about art imitates life. Well, actually, I, I, I'm beginning to believe that maybe life is imitating art because it seems to me, especially of late that we get all these types of programs or, or movies that come about. And then we find out that it's kind of true. And we all look around and say, well, didn't we see that in a movie first? But the reality is, is that that stuff that, that, that takes place in real life, it doesn't happen in a vacuum and it doesn't happen overnight. All the players that in that sort of real life drama have been in motion for months, sometimes years. And it finally comes to a head. This is the same thing that's going on in North Korea. This is not something new. This is not something that just came to a head because Donald Trump's in office. No, this has been going on for decades. Look, folks, we were once at... Real, we're still at war with them. There has never been a peace treaty signed. But we were once at real war with North Korea. I mean, exchanging bullets and, and shells and, 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 and uh, you know, exploding across the border and, and, and losing ground and taking ground and losing ground and taking ground and uh, us being, you know, uh, our U.S. And, and South Korean soldiers being killed and, 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 and North Korean soldiers and Chinese soldiers being killed. It was major stuff. The fear was back then that this kind of fighting in North Korea, which is why it became a political war and they shut down the war before there was a victory, which really pissed off MacArthur, is because you had a bunch of politicians in this country that, that feared, feared North or the Korean conflict leading into World War Three, in dragging in, in in parties that weren't currently involved. The problem was is that they already were involved. China was already involved, which is why it was so difficult for. Well, there were two reasons why it was difficult for MacArthur to uh, to eke out a real victory. One, because China was supplying North Korea, and two. Because we had politicians, just like in Vietnam, that kept them from really winning. They didn't want to win. Because they were scared that it would lead to World War III. And then when, it, when, it came, when the possibility came to say, hey, let's, let's call a ceasefire. You know, we'll call it a draw. You know, both fighters go back to their corners and we'll call it a draw and we'll just go home for now. There, there was no peace negotiations. There was no treaty that was being sought. It was just a ceasefire. That's where we are today. Nobody really tried to resolve the conflict back then. So the, the, the problem is, is that since nobody tried to resolve it, the problem festered. So it has been growing for decades. Whatever it is that North Korea has against the South, and whatever it is that the North Koreans have against, have against the USA and the West, has that that. That negativity has been festering since the, the, the end of hostilities in the Korean conflict. And nobody's done anything about it. Oh, sure, it, you know, from time to time, they, you know, one of the dictators up there, you know, Kim Jong-un or Kim Jong-il, they'd rear their ugly head. And then a, a U.S. president uh, and an Asian coalition like J Japan and, and Australia and, and, and a few others would, would do certain things and economic things and, and put them back in their place. And then they disappear and shut up for a little while. Um, but nobody ever tried to fix it. I'm not, I'm, I'm not blaming our side for not trying to fix it because it's also most likely that you know, their side didn't want to fix a damn thing. But nobody's ever tried to fix it. So whether it be our side or their side, and this, this has just been festering, and at some point, like all good dictatorial stories, it has to come to a head. These, these guys just don't tend to fade away into obscurity. There's an end game. Now, with Kim Jong-il, his endgame was making sure that his son, Kim Jong-un, was going to continue the family tradition, which evidently he is. 
Now, from what I know so far, Kim Jong-un has no posterity as of yet. So it's all on him. So what is Kim Jong-un's end game? Maybe he doesn't have one other than total self-destruction, which means we're going to get dragged into it. This is serious stuff. And you gotta, you got to think about these people on a psychological basis. And this is stuff that, that our lamestream media just doesn't want to touch. Oh, no, 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 no. Instead of focusing on, on the problem that North Korea is posing to a lot of people in an ever-growing region of the planet, no, they want to focus on why it is that grandstanding Bernie Sanders didn't attend with 99 other senators to a briefing at the White House on North Korea. I mean, hell, even Chuck Schumer and Elizabeth Warren went. I mean, I, how, do, how do you live up to that? Hey, even Elizabeth Warren went to the briefing. I don't care if they just went for tea and crumpets. The problem is, is that everybody went, including the most staunch opponents, Warren and Schumer. And you, Bernie Sanders, are saying, well, you you weren't going to be a part of the pony show, the circus. Uh, Now who's grandstanding? You're on MSNBC talking about, well, I wasn't going to be a part of that of that uh, that pony show. No. So now you're you're making your own pony show and you're on the wrong side of the fence. I mean, you could have just went up there for tea and crumpets for crying out loud. They could have just said, oh, the only thing they could have said to you is, that, yeah, North Korea is bad. They could have nukes. That's the briefing. That was still enough for you to know. But Bernie doesn't think that that's enough to know. Yeah, I... What? You know, you know what this reminds me of? If we're talking about television and movies? This rem- I just can't believe that we actually have people like Bernie Sanders running around. This reminds me of the Twilight Zone. July is National Baked Bean Month. Excuse me. Yes, a month in which we pay tribute to one of America's favorite, most healthful, and nutritious foods. I'm terribly sorry. As I was saying, good Lord, this is terribly embarrassing. I'm so... Oh, doggy! I guess I'd better wrap this up quick. Basically, Jesus! Whoa! Oh, God! Oh, my God! Baked beans. They're nature's way of saying, for God's sake, open a window. Sorry. Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Sign him up for the Box of Bait Club and he'll never be hungry again. The Box of Bait Club is a brand new dream come true for every fisherman. Something new and different in your tackle box every month. Every month, another excuse to get outside and do what you love. Don't let this one get away. The Box of Bait Club is currently accepting a limited number of pre-orders with subscriptions starting at $39.95 per month. Find out more now. Log on to boxofbaitclub.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars. healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 We've all heard of male enhancement. 
But now, there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books a Million, Barnes and Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. If you think that things are are happening in a vacuum and are static, then you haven't been really been paying attention. Uh, you know, th- this happens uh, whether it be with Iran, whether it be with, even with with, uh, with with countries that don't seem to be on our radar that aren't causing us problems now. Uh, they've caused us problems in the past, and nothing is really ch- small. Uh, S- Somalia, anybody? You know, the Somali pirates type of thing. Uh, they've been kind of quiet lately, but nothing's been resolved about it. So they're simmering. They're simmering. I mean, it's amazing how we just jump from hot spot to hot spot only simply because somebody just decides to stop being quiet. Some dictator or some jerk decides to stop being quiet and cause trouble and rattle their sabers or their swords or what have you. And then, then all of a sudden everybody's paying attention. And then, then they go quiet for a little while, and they think, oh, yeah, well, we've taken care of them. No, we haven't taken care of them. Nothing's been resolved. That's the problem. And, and, and I, think, I think Kim keeps reminding us that nothing in the, in the Korean Peninsula has ever been resolved. And nobody, everybody wants to kick the can down the road. Well, we'll just contain them, and uh, you know, we'll just uh, you know put economic you know sanctions on them, and oh, we'll kick the we'll kick the solution down the road because we don't know what the answer is, or it's too tough for us to deal with right now, or you know, we just uh, we don't want to deal with them, or they just label them a nut job. Well, you know, Kim Jong Un probably is a nut job, but by labeling him a nut job and then not dealing with him at all is it does nothing more than infuriate a nut job. You're going to pay attention to me, damn it. And then what happens? Then they go off the deep end and they do something that we get and, and people die. And, and, and then we sweep the problem under the rug once again and nobody talks about it. That's what happens in, in, in Western culture a lot. Let me tell you something. Uh, much of the world, you know, what, if you're talking European and, and North American values, we unfortunately have this instant gratification type of thing. You see, the rest of the world is used to waiting and being patient to get what they want. They're willing to wait decades, if need be, to get what they want. I mean, do you realize that a lot of this was something that came as a shock to a lot of American American companies? Do you realize that after World War II, a lot of Japanese countries? Had, had business plans. Yeah, so do American companies. American companies had, what, business plans for the next 12 months, for the next uh, 24 months, the next five years, maybe the next 10 years. Japanese companies had real, solid business plans 100 years out. Now, sure, a lot can happen in 100 years to change it, but the whole point is, is that you set a, you put in place a, a pattern and a scenario uh, and a pathway for the next 100 years for your particular country, uh, company. They do that with countries. The United States and the West never does that. We're, we're, we're all into this instant gratification crap. They're into waiting it out because they're all, well, you know, oh, next generation, my son will benefit from my work. We don't do that anymore. So, you know, the, the, the Kim Jong-il thing, 
My son will benefit from my work. That's all it takes, folks. A little bit of patience. <laughs> and you, you just outweigh us because we have such a short attention span. We do. Especially Americans and Brits. We have an extremely short attention span. It's absolutely unbelievable. Just If you don't like what, what you're seeing on TV, just wait five minutes. Literally, it will change. The following program is recommended for mature individuals and may contain material unsuitable for morons, cretins, and dish wipes. If you are a moron or a member of the PTL club, Please turn off your radio, because we don't need any more stupid, narrow-minded, pencil-neck geeks who wouldn't know the First Amendment if it came up and bit them on the butt. Thank you. When I found out I had atrial fibrillation, a serious but highly treatable heart condition, first thing I thought of was, who would take care of my wife and children if anything were to happen to me? My doctor recommended Provactin. I had a lot of questions, so I did some research. It turns out Provactin is the number one recommended drug for Crohn's disease. I think my doctor's trying to kill me and steal my wife. Doctors, they'll stop at nothing to get your wife. The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. See that cute little dog in the pet store window? Chances are it came from a puppy mill. A breeding facility that forces caged, neglected, and often sick dogs to churn out puppy after puppy to be sold for profit. Meanwhile, millions of wonderful, healthy pets end up in animal shelters. This leads to the killing of more than 9,000 by the end of today. But with one simple choice, you can help. Just by deciding to adopt instead of purchase your next pet. Animal shelters are full of amazing pets looking for a home. When you adopt your new best friend, not only are you saving a life, you're taking a stand against puppy mills. When your friends see the smart choice and impact you've made, they adopt their next pet and share with five of their friends, who share with five more. Before long, thousands get involved. Pet stores stop selling dogs from puppy mills, and even more lives are saved. And with your help, we can save them all. Visit bestfriends.org slash puppy mills to learn more. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance, in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all. The few, the proud, The Marines. The human voice. It can be sweet as music. Powerful as thunder. And so, my fellow Americans. Cheerful as laughter. (laughs) But for millions of people, it can also be a sign of COPD. This serious lung disease can make it so hard to breathe 
you often can't catch a breath or finish a sentence, let alone carry a tune. And many who have COPD don't even know it. That's where your voice comes in. If you think you or a loved one have symptoms, talk with a health care provider. Early diagnosis can mean better treatments and quality of life. Join us in raising our voices. For the millions with COPD who can't, learn more, breathe better at NIH.gov. As a mother, you don't want to have to worry about this bill is coming, but then she needs this chemo. That's a decision you shouldn't have to make. It's a huge burden lifted financially, and so it allows you to give singular focus to your child. I've never known a hospital that takes care of their patients so thoroughly. That was the first thing I was like, how are we going to do this? When they told us that we didn't have to pay a single bill, I was like, wow. They pretty much have saved us. It's like the world has been lifted off of your shoulders, and now your focus is supporting this child. There is not another hospital like St. Jude. The patient care is unmatchable. It saved my life. It saved my daughter's life. It saved our family. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. On the battlefield, there's a saying America's military men and women live by. Never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Off the battlefield, Wounded Warrior Project operates with the same goal. We leave no warrior behind. Wounded Warrior Project is a nonprofit organization created to help our men and women returning home with the scars of war. Whether those scars are physical or mental, we're here to make sure that they heal. And whether it's helping those with post-traumatic stress disorder live a normal life again or giving much-needed support to injured warriors and veterans' hospitals, because no one deserves our help more than the men and women who risk their lives to keep us safe. Wounded Warrior Project. We never leave a fallen warrior behind. Ever. Learn more about what we do at WoundedWarriorProject.org. You want to know what time it is? It's time to bring the rain. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. Somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire is Rod Beckles. And welcome back. Hour number three here on the Rod Echo Show. The fastest three hours on internet talk radio is right here on the Rod Echo Show. Welcome once again to Liberty Lovers and Ecclesiastites all around the globe. Call in number this morning is 603-835-3226. Again, that's uh, 603, toll-free, 603-835-3226. And here in my currently nicotine, uh, cigar nicotine-stained fingers, we have this story from the Free Beacon. Uh, China's future aircraft carrier force could be a financial train wreck. See, all you got to do is, if anybody has any doubt that what I say on this program is right, then this should be one of those things I told you yesterday and the day before. I told you that having a Navy with aircraft carriers is expensive. It puts a financial drain on that nation's uh, economy and budget. And there aren't a lot of countries out there that have a big enough economy that can afford to have multiple aircraft carriers floating around out there in the open seas. The United States just happens to have, depending on who you talk to, the world either the world's biggest or second largest 
uh, economy. So we can afford to do this. But even for us, building these things are getting more and more expensive. I mean, the Gerald, what is it? The, the uh, USS Gerald R. Ford cost a reported $16 billion. And, and it's not ready for combat yet. So, and, and well, we've got a couple more of these things that are being built right now. But uh, so these things are prohibitively expensive for smaller nations. In nations that don't have an economy that can support it, which is why Russia doesn't have a lot of these huge behemoth, you know, giant super carriers roaming around the seas. They're just expensive. So what what happened here? What happened was is China decided to purchase a Russian carrier that was being built in a Ukrainian shipyard. Um, and, uh, for what, you know, you had the fall of the Soviet union and for whatever reason, uh, Ukrainians, uh, they needed money. And so they sold the unfinished carrier to the, uh, the Chinese thinking now, they, <laughs> now the story behind this is rather in- interesting. It's very interesting. Ukrainians were to, and, and, uh, cer- certain Russian operatives were, were led to believe that, now, this this carrier was not going to go, fall into the hands of the Chinese military. Yeah, right. Wink, wink, nod, nod. But yet it was going to be used as a, as a gambling platform. Yes, it was going to be a floating casino. It was going to be painted bright colors and, and it was going to be turned into a floating casino and a hotel and blah, 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 blah. And evidently, yeah, right. You're going to buy an aircraft carrier and turn it into a, a, a floating casino. But anyway... The story goes is that the Ukrainians and certain Russian people bought the story and the Chinese bought it, just Chinese conglomerate. But lo and behold, the Chinese conglomerate turned it over to the Chinese Navy, who then began to disassemble, retro, you know, you know, um, uh, view the technology of this thing and dissect it. And then start plans and designs on aircraft that the Chinese didn't have yet, that they could, that they, and all the other stuff that needed to go along with it, the Chinese didn't have that they were going to need uh, to go along with an aircraft carrier. And so while they were doing this, they were refurbishing and 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 putting their own little touches and techniques in, into this carrier, and then they set it afloat. And they took what they learned out of tearing this thing apart and putting it back together and built their own. And their first from the ground up aircraft carrier was launched yesterday and began its its trials much like just a few days after the Ger- uh, USS Gerald R Ford new class of carrier called the Gerald R Gerald Ford class uh was launched and began its sea trials first of first of its sea trials the 16 billion dollar vessel you know t- took off to uh to 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 do what it needed to do, to, it, it, it hasn't gone to a shakedown, but it's 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 initial sea trials. But this is not the first one. This is not the only ship that China has. You know, aircraft carrier Chinese have on the books. In fact, they're in the middle of of building or planning up to four more carriers, including some that are going to be super carrier class. Yes, flat tops, because the the, the, the this new carrier that they built and the one that they refurbish. Is not a flat top. It has a ski slope takeoff. But um, so the Chinese uh, plans for its future carrier force could become a major financial difficulty for the country. The resources poured into aircraft carriers are a massive budgetary burden, even in the U.S. of A. And this is according to Andrew Marshall, former director of the Pentagon's Office of Net Assessment. China's first indigenous aircraft carrier, signed the hull number CV-17, is expected to be named the Shandong, Shandong, which will be slightly larger at 70,000 tons than the CV-16, China's first ever aircraft carrier, uh, which was at 66,000 tons, I do believe, if I recall. The CV-17, characterized by the Chinese as a homegrown design, is an upgraded version of the uh, Liaoning. The Soviet-built Liaoning, however, was not developed either in China 
or with China's naval requirements in mind. Ukraine sold the unfinished ship in 1998 to Chinese middlemen pretending to have no connection to the Navy. Yay! Uh, so the, uh, the, the, uh, the Liaoning was eventually towed to the Dailian shipyards where it underwent more than a decade of refitting as the People's Liberation Army Navy worked to develop aircraft for the carrier for carrier base use. Now, the new carrier, they, they claim, is going to be just enough different from the Liaoning that, that the uh, plan will enjoy minimal benefits, if any, of no synergism from having two similar designed ships. In other words, these ships are not very much alike at all. Now, the problem is, is that th- these two ships are non-nuclear. So, so, so they're oil-based, which means they, don't, they, they need to be you know, serviced a lot more often than a nuclear-based craft. However, the uh, the plan is expected to launch a second carrier that they built, uh, that they are building from scratch in 2021 that will be equipped with a steam catapult similar to the U.S. Navy's current fleet of supercarriers use a steam catapult system, not a ski jump system. These are the new carriers that they're currently uh, building. So they're not going to be like the first two at all. As a matter of fact, the last one that is on the designing board um, is not going to be a, a subsequent uh, is not going to be a a third series of carrier in in um, in China. Calls for ships to be fitted with electromagnetic catapults, like that of the U.S. Navy's incoming Gerald Ford class, and to be powered with nuclear reactors. Where are they getting this information? Are they developing this stuff themselves? The Chinese? No, of course not. They're stealing it and buying it from everywhere else. Now, it's not saying that the Chinese are not smart enough to be able to develop this stuff on their own. But let's face it. They, they've come, you know, they're, not, they're taking the shortcut. They've gleaned everything they possibly... What did they do with their carriers? Did they learn how to do, do the carrier all by themselves? No. They, they, took, they took 10 years and took apart somebody else's carrier, and then they copied it. And then they thought, well, you know what? We've got these designs over here. We can copy this one over here. So let's get a flat top after we build this one. We'll get a flat top with steam catapults. Wait, wait. The U.S. has got a new system, a more dependable system called a... A uh, electromagnetic catapult, not a steam catapult. Well, we better get one of those. Let's see if we can get the information from them on that, right? Well, I mean, the, the, the new Gerald Ford is such a high-tech ship. It really is. The, the, the Gerald Ford class is going to be a high... Now, future, according to those in the know... Uh, future Gerald Ford class carriers will cost about twelve to thirteen billion dollars, not the sixteen billion. Well, I think it was originally this one was really supposed to cost ten to eleven billion, and because of all the technology, um, it, the costs skyrocketed, overruns. But the but they've supposedly fixed a lot of that stuff, so it should bring the cost back down to eleven billion uh, per carrier. And we're also going to see some new technology deployed in some of these things like um, uh, uncarries, like, like, like rail guns and laser guns. And yeah, this stuff is, I mean, this is cutting edge stuff. It's coming, it's coming on board. So the question is, are we going to start seeing this stuff all of a sudden start appearing on, on Chinese vessels? And if they do, how is it possible? Did, did, did we have, a, did we have um, you know, were there a lot of people involved in, say, the Obama administration that were much like the Clinton administration in, in passing off a lot of secrets as non-secrets? Or, well, hell, you know, Hillary did have a private server in, in an unsecure server in a bathroom somewhere. And, and we know that other people, other countries were able to get in into the server and look at some of the emails. So, you know, it's highly possible some of that stuff made it to some of this classified stuff made it to. China for a price. <clears throat> not 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 saying the Clinton sold anything. Not saying the Clinton sold anything directly. Uh, but we do have things like Charlie Tree, do we not? 
or people like Charlie Tree. Just saying. So China is, and, and this they're bringing this kind of stuff online over the next half decade to decade because of what they're doing in the South China Sea. Nobody else in the region is going to have aircraft carriers but the U.S. of A. What do you think China's going to do? You think think China is just going to sit back and and say, look at our pretty aircraft carriers and not actually use them to at least intimidate their 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 foes? Well, nobody else is going to have aircraft carriers. Nobody else is going to be able to project, but not even. But look, I mean, there there are these mini carriers. I know, but the Marines have what we call these uh, Marine these. Um, Oh, geez, what are they called? They're, they're mini carriers, basically. And, and in Great Britain and France, they have the same thing. I think Australia has a couple of these mini things, but they're nothing compared to a super carrier. Nothing. They don't have the ability of a super carrier has. Um, it just, you know, the, the mini carriers, especially the ones that the Marine, the U.S. Marines use, they're, they're, more, they're more not about deploying uh, firepower as they are about transferring that firepower in other words landing craft uh you know it's it, there uh, the u.s nimitz or 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 carl vinson they can deploy firepower anywhere without needing you know and and that being a floating base where the the the, uh, the marine st- type of stuff the mini carriers that, that australia has and that you know britain has and france they're not meant to be an operational floating base. They're meant to get equipment from one point to another in an efficient, fast manner and have that base being offloaded on land. I mean, they can, they can of course, you know, do attacks and counterattacks from, from the deck, but that's not what they're made for. And they don't have a lot of aircraft, and they're mostly helicopter aircraft. Well, in the case of the Brits, they have, you know, the, the, the Harrier jump jet type of technology. But other than that, it's not a very – it's not a full force – mini air force group that that a super carrier has and right now it's just us and russia that have what we would call super carriers well now china is joining that group um you know i don't know how many russia has now uh, we're down i mean trump wants to build us back up to a, a navy with 350 uh vessels which would amount to about 14 14 or 15 super carriers because uh, what are we? We're down to like ten now. Ridiculously no, low number. But then again, once you get once you get the Americans pissed off, man, and we get determined, we can take one carrier and make it seem like it's like there's like there's twenty. And just remember World War II, what we did with one carrier for such a long period of time. Yeah, if it wasn't for that one carrier, we wouldn't have beat the Japanese. Even the Japanese couldn't believe what we could do with one carrier. When they found out later it was one carrier, that's it? One? You guys only had one? Well, it's because carriers, if used properly, are powerful tools of war. Ooh, love hurts. Yes, love hurts. It can hurt emotionally, but more important, it can also hurt you physically. It can hurt you in a way which nobody who owns a hot tub and lives in California can afford to be unaware of. Yes, I'm talking about California hot tub rectal gonorrhea. This painful and curable disease can make an enjoyable soak in a hot tub with family, friends, and dog into a literally unforgettable experience. If you catch California hot tub rectal gonorrhea, not only will you walk around feeling like you're about to pass a twisted sardine can lid, you'll also smell like a pile of burning tractor tires. So don't jump out of the frying pan and into the hot tub. Because if you get California hot tub rectal gonorrhea, it'll really burn your ass. This has been a public service message brought to you by the Citizens Against CHTRG Foundation. California hot tub rectal gonorrhea. We're not going to take it sitting down. 
Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand, and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must-read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past, and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement on Amazon.com. Maxine Waters. No, she's not a senator. She's just a congressman. I know. I, she's a No, she's a congresswoman. I don't say congresswoman. She's a congressman. Well, you're you're just you're just a misogynist. You hate women. No, not really. Uh, but here's a woman. How old is she? She's old. She loves her wigs, though. Not not gonna deny. She's got some. Those are some some expensive wigs. But Maxine Waters is still out there touting Trump's connections to Russia. But, but according to The Blaze, she's got some of her own. Yes, indeed. California Representative Maxine Waters has been relentlessly pointing fingers at President Donald Trump and his ad administration's ties to Russia. Waters is such a fan of the accusation that she has even recently speculated that Representative Jason Chaffetz Departure from his seat was due to his own connections with Russia, a conspiracy which she has admitted to having no evidence of. Uh, now, I don't know. I don't know if Representative uh, uh, Chaffetz has any connections to the Russian premier. I mean, pres what, what's he called? President? Yeah, the president or, or prime, prime minister, right? Premier? Yeah, that, that Putin fella. Is it still Medvedev? No, it's the Putin. Putin's back. In, yeah, Putin. He's got connections to Putin. I know he does. I know. I just feel it in my bones. Uh, due to these uh, 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 alleged connections, Waters has been banging the drum for Trump's impeachment daily on any show. <laughs> on anybody who will have her. Uh, have her on and so she can sp yeah Trump, he needs to be impeached he needs to be impeached because he he's a russian crony he trump is probably russian himself he is he's i know he was born in moscow now due to this waters who has been in office since 1990 this is 2017 now folks you know this you realize is 27 years ago she was first elected she's been there almost 30 years uh, has seen her star rise considerably on the left. CNN noted this as Waters having a moment. <laughs> having, however, as He Street has recently discovered for all of Waters' finger-pointing at Republicans in the Trump administration for having connections to Russia, Waters has some quite, some quiet ties of her own. This comes in the form of relationship with uh, a 
pro-Russian anti-American communist groups known as the Working Workers' World Party. The Workers' World Party is reportedly a militant left-wing group that sympathizes with many enemies of the USA, including North Korea, Iran, and Cuba. Well, we know how much Waters loves Cuba. She loved, she loved Fidel Castro. Oh, she loved him. She would have married him if she could. It also supports Russia's invasion of the Ukraine and is a fan of Russia's President Vladimir Putin. So she's got connection with this group. I've told you this a, a ton of times before, folks. Whenever a liberal, liberal Democrat is pointing a finger at you, that old saying, three fingers are pointing back at them, well, they're pointing the finger at you so they can take all the focus off of them because they're the ones doing the, the very thing that they're accusing you of. And they're trying to take the focus off of them so they can get away with it. You know, hey, hey, see, don't pay attention to me. Look at that guy over there. Now, he's got all the connections. Trump's got all the connections. And see, even, even, even Jay and Chaffetz probably has some connections, but... Uh, this is, I'm only saying it because I know I got some connections and I don't want you to find out about it or pay attention to it. So I'm going to accuse them and everybody's going to go over there because the lamestream media is not, nothing but made up of uh, nothing but a bunch of lap dogs and they're going to go follow my finger pointing and go stick a microphone in front of Chaffet, uh, Jason Chaffet's face with no evidence whatsoever and say, what do you have to say about it? Do you, do you have any connections? Huh? 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 Do you? Do you? Do you? You deny it? You deny it? Uh, do you have any proof that you can deny it? Do you have any proof that you don't have any connections? Huh? 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 Because that's, that's what they're going to do. So they do it to Trump. Can you prove you don't have any connections, Trump? Huh? Do you, can you prove it? Can you prove you don't have any connections? Huh? 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 In the meantime, you've got uh, Waters, who's the one with the real connections. It's like, what is it? What was the movie? Wag the Dog, right? Yeah, that's what this is. Another Wag the Dog. Or is it Dog the Wag? The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Started off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed, could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance, 
in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today, or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. Bring the rain. Have you tried it yet? Have you taken a ride? Have you hailed a ride with Uber? A lot of people who end up riding with Uber like it so much that they keep asking Uber drivers, how can they do the same thing, earn earn, uh, some extra income on their own schedule? And uh, Uber drivers tell them, well, they, all they have to do is really just go over to, to, to Uber to find out the details. And but you can do that same thing here. I know I talk a lot about Uber, and and you can earn a substantial second income, you know, part-time income. If you need a part-time job, or if you just want some extra cash, you want to save for a vacation or what have you, it doesn't matter what you use it for. You can use, use the cash that you earn from Uber for just about anything. But you're in business for yourself, not by yourself. You get access to the entire Uber platform and technology, the most advanced technological ride hailing uh, tech, uh, technological system on the planet right now bar none and it's all designed to help you the driver make as much money as possible in the shortest amount of time possible so if you want to find out more and if you are eligible in certain markets for a sign on bonus up to i think some of the sign on bonuses depending on the region or the area is up to 500 bucks just for signing up and driving and taking people on a few rides, you can get up to $500 bonuses. Uh, now, of course, there are some restrictions, and not every market has bonuses available to new drivers. So in order to find out if you're eligible for any kind of bonuses, just go over to rodeckles.net slash store and click on the Uber button, and you will get all the details you need to make an informed decision. Uber, it's not just a ride, it's a way of life. I didn't make that up, somebody else did, but hey, there you have it. Um, but Uber is pretty cool, though. You, got, you really should try it out. If you've never taken a ride on an Uber, uh, it is a lot cheaper than a taxi uh, in, in, in most areas. And 
a lot of places, people, riders say, well, the cars smell better and they're cleaner and the driver's more courteous than a taxi. I don't make this stuff up. These are from actual people. So check out Uber, both as a driver and as a rider. PJ Media, top Democrat. Open a party. A party is open to talking about value-added tax, VAT. You know, there isn't a tax out there that's been proposed that a, a Democrat wouldn't like. So Representative Joe Crowley, uh, Democrat out of New York, vice chairman of the House Democratic Caucus and member of the House Ways and Means Committee, told PJ Media that he does not think Congress should have the current 35% corporate tax rate as a uh, cut, uh, uh, the, uh, the corporate tax rate, 35% corporate tax rate, as President Donald Trump has suggested. We're trying to get it down to anywhere from 15 to 20%. Uh, Crowley also said that he is willing to discuss the val- a value-added tax. Yeah, so all that money that is offshore because companies refuse to bring it back onshore because the tax is too high. This nut job says, nah, 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 we're not going to lower the tax. God forbid you keep the money that you actually earn. No, we want it. Uh, it doesn't matter that if we did lower it to 10 or 15%, that they'd bring trillions of dollars that's parked offshore. So the government would get even more money than it's getting now. Now, it's not about that. It's not about the revenue. I told you that before. Well, these liberals, this is not about revenue. This is about control. And a value-added tax would be another form of control for them. So Democrats, th- th- there isn't a tax that they don't like. I haven't seen, I haven't seen a new tax uh, that has ever been proposed that the majority of Democrats didn't support or didn't like or didn't at least want to talk about and think it was a good, yeah, uh, value-added tax, that might be a good idea. Now, how best can we use it uh, to, to, to control people's behavior? That's the first thing that they think about. They don't think about revenue generation at all. Because if if they were strictly about revenue generation for raising money for the government, they wouldn't propose or have some of the taxes that they have. And some of the other taxes they do have, they'd be cutting because the evidence has shown that when those particular taxes were cut, more revenue flowed into into the, uh, the Treasury Department. So it's not about collecting money. This is not what these people want. I've mentioned this time and time again. This is not about collecting money. Not at all. So Crowley said that he is willing to discuss a value-added tax, a VAT, or V-A-T tax, as part of a comprehensive tax reform package to see what effect will it have. Oh, so he's not not willing to cut the uh, the corporate tax rate down from uh, 35% to something more reasonable, like even 15 or 20%. No, 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 no. But hey! Well, while the corporate tax is still at 35% and the, and the income tax brackets are still, what, seven different brackets, let's introduce a VAT tax, too. So tax reform looks like it's going to be the next big thing the House is going to take up. Uh, are, are there areas of common ground between Republicans and Democrats where you could actually reach a consensus, so as... PJ Media. Crowley responds by saying, well, as I said here, I think both sides recognize that the code is overly complicated. Well, yeah, because you help make it that way. Because of that, it's inefficient, and in many respects, it's not fair. It's all about this fairness, because, you know, when they speak, when you, when you hear a Democrat say fair, it's simply because some, they, they think that those who are wealthy and rich aren't paying their fair share. So watch out for that word fair whenever they use it. And the most important aspect, he says, of it, as I've said, is that it doesn't, parts of the code do not promote growth. Yeah, well, no kidding, but you don't want to, you don't want to cut the, uh, the corporate tax rate so these companies that have trillions of dollars parked offshore will bring it onshore. It's a bad idea, to, according to you, to, to, to have, bring all this, this, uh, this money onshore and bring it into investment into the American infrastructure, American jobs, American people, American factories, and pay taxes on it. Oh, no, no, no. Let let it stay open. You know what they want to do? They want to change the system so that you get, the company gets taxed no matter where the money is. Doesn't matter where, they just, that's the whole point, folks. They want to be, so hey, 
So if you're, if you're leaving your money over there, we're just going to tax it anyway. So you're going to have to pay the taxes. You're going to get hammered. And then you're going to do what we tell you to do. And then you're going to give us more and more money to, you know, through lobbyists and campaign donations to try to influence us to get what you want done. That's what it's all about, folks. It's about power and control. It's not about revenue generation. That's what it's all about. It's about power and control. Speaking of power and control, did you know that Chelsea Clinton got another award? Yeah. Um, Chelsea Clinton got another award. According to Heat Street, um, she got another award for doing nothing special. Yeah, just like her mother before her. Chelsea Clinton appears to be creating a cottage industry for herself and receiving random awards for her unparalleled contributions to society. Her scintillating uh, takes on current events. And her incredibly generous heart. So, uh, Chelsea Clinton, not content with just her Vanity Sponsored Achievement Award, Chelsea on Tuesday night accepted the annual City Harvest Award for commitment in fighting hunger in New York City. Now, uh, now this is <laughs> this is simply evidently it has come to light that Chelsea Clinton on a single day in 2017 helped City Harvest City Harvest pack some grapefruit. According to the Daily Mail, Clinton and staff from her family's foundation packed 25,000 pounds of grapefruit to distribute to New York. The city residents. That's it. That, that's what she's getting this award for. She's getting a, a grand humanitarian award for for one day <laughs> out of her busy life packing some grapefruit for <laughs> she's getting an award for because uh, she's look they're, they're they're primping her for for other for bigger, badder, greater things, folks. They, they, it's just, it's hilarious. This stuff is hilarious. Uh, the, and, and, but, 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 but we have some people out there on the left that just want the Clintons to go away. They, they say that their time is up. Do not even try to groom Hillary. That's why they're looking towards, to, to, I don't know. Are they still going to look towards Bernie now? Now that Bernie was the only Senator that didn't go up to Capitol Hill is, is Bernie Sanders now, Trying to burn Elizabeth Warren in Chuck Schumer. I mean, didn't go up to Capitol Hill, so and he's saying it's a pon- dog and pony show up there, actually. And Elizabeth Warren said, even she's well, interesting. She hasn't even she hasn't said anything negative about it. At least not that I know of yet. I mean, she'll probably come out lying. Uh, you know, Focahontas Liawatha will probably come out and say something negative about Trump in, in this whole deal. But like, evidently, Trump wasn't the one giving the briefing. Well, he's just the president. He's not the he's not the military expert. But um, hey, so there 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 you have it. Clinton is getting Chelsea is keeping. I mean, that kind of story is actually kind of boring for me too. I even yawn uh, on that one. That's <laughs> so. Moving on, <laughs> Clintons are boring and done. Judge who struck down. A Trump administration crackdown on sanctuary cities is a hardcore Democrat activist whose life has been steeped in liberal political uh, politics since his childhood. Yes, Judge William Oreck III, who is now 63 years of age, on Tuesday blocked the administration from withholding federal funds from uh, cities that don't cooperate with federal immigration officials. Now, Now, first of all, actually... The judge can't do what he did. Second of all, actually, it's the law of the land and has been. And the federal government is is the reason that those funds would be withheld because those funds are supposed to be used to do what? To actually help the federal government enforce the laws on the books on immigration. That's what those grants that are that are being targeted um, are, are, are going to be. Well, look, if you're not going to use the money to help the Fed, then you don't need the money. You, then you don't need the money. So it's not that, that, the, that the government would withhold it, hold the money. 
and thus triggering the judge's decision. No, they wouldn't even be able to qualify for the grant anyway because they wouldn't be using the money for what the grant is for. Look, when you, when you ask for grant money, you got to use it for what the grant's for from the federal government. You can't, t- otherwise it's called fraud. So this whole notion that this, that this judge is grandstanding on means absolutely nothing because they wouldn't even, these cities wouldn't even qualify for the grant money to begin with because the money that they would be looking for would be to help and assist the federal government paying for people and equipment to assist the federal government in upholding the immigration laws of this country. If you're a sanctuary city, that means you're not upholding the laws. Therefore, what would you need the money for? Therefore, you would not qualify. So it's not as if they would have to yank the money. They just wouldn't qualify uh, qualify for it in the first place. How simple is that? Uh, But you know what? This judge knows this. He even admitted it in, in his decision. He knows it. But now the left gets a, gets a talking point. See, see this another judge, another ju- another liberal Obama appointee judge off the left coast has just stopped Trump. They didn't stop Jack. Jack didn't stop anything. And you know, fr- frankly, this is probably why why Trump maybe Trump is just really is trying to ignore some of these things, which is why he's not doesn't seem like he's really hammering home and trying to get these things to the Supreme Court as quickly as possible. He's just taking his time. Because he's ignoring it. He's igno- because of the, the basic rulings on, from all these judges, uh, no matter what, what he was doing, uh, you know, the Muslim ban, there's no Muslim ban. He's like, screw it. We're, just gonna, we're not going to allow certain people in anyway. We have the ability to do that. I don't have to have an executive order to tell us we're not going to. We just don't do it as a matter of policy. Judges have no, have no ruling whatsoever on foreign policy. None. They can't, they can't force a president to, do, to have certain kind of... It's unconstitutional for you not to be friends with North Korea. No, they can't do that. They can't. They have no power that. So the, the, look, Trump is quietly just ignoring these people to begin with. Yeah, it, it, uh, don't doubt me on that, folks. Do not doubt me. Because most of the time, it has nothing to do with what his, what his executive... His, Trump's executive orders... I think they're written in a way by Trump, you know, uh, partly by Trump himself, just to tweak the left so they do stupid stuff like this. So it gets known that they that they really can't, they have no power, re- really. I mean, yeah, okay, great. Judge says that I can't, I can't take away your money. Well, now you got to apply for a grant. Guess what? It's fr- either it's fraud because you're not going to use it for what the grant is for, or you don't qualify for the grant. Which is it? Yeah, goodbye, Judge. You can't stop him from doing that. What if I told you that you could lose weight simply by drinking coffee? Change your coffee, change your life. Our gourmet estate-grown coffee is infused with powerful herbs that help you melt fat and keep you from feeling hungry for six-plus hours. Get results or your money back. Order yours today at SkinnyCoffeeShop.com. That's SkinnyCoffeeShop.com. Tea and water also available. SkinnyCoffeeShop.com. Have a legal problem and need some serious legal advice? Then you're listening to the wrong podcast. Any facts we say here are probably wrong. And <laughs> any analysis of the real law should not be followed. There you go. Reasonable men are here to take a twisted look at the law. Stack your hair right. Learn in hand. Best name in law school. Check us out on iTunes, reasonablemen.com, or on your favorite podcast app. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. 
$15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand, and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must-read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past, and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. Now look, I'm not a fashion guru. I, I don't. I, I like classic cuts and classic styles. Uh, I don't. I don't claim to be. Um, you know, I, I don't. I don't go to places. In the, you know, when the ripped jeans were in style, I didn't go to places in the mall that charge you like a hundred and two hundred dollars for a pair of ripped jeans. If I want to rip jeans, I just rip them. Rip them my damn self. But evidently, Nord Nordstrom, uh, Nordstrom, the store has lit the internet on fire with an expensive product that many are calling ridiculous, including myself. Have you seen this stuff yet? What they're doing on its website, the department store is selling um, a pair of jeans that is covered in fake mud. Now, now, first of all, that's just an odd thing to do. They're not really dirty. They're not really muddy. I don't know what this fake mud is. But they're selling these jeans and these jean jackets and and, and stuff. It's, It's, you know... Kind of remember the uh, the old um, uh, uh, was it uh, movie with with oh, Derek Zoolander the Zoolander movie you know the the um, the derelict line of clothing you want to look like a slum a homeless person derelict but in, of course you make it sound French and it sounds classy right so we have these pair of jeans and and this these um, these jean jackets that are covered in fake mud. That's not the pro- the problem is the price. $425. The the Barracuda straight leg jeans feature obvious splashes of what Nordstrom calls caked on muddy coating, giving the effect of being worn on a day in the dirt. So you can get down and dirty without getting down and dirty if you want to fork over $425 for a pair of jeans and another $425 for a denim jean jacket. And you, if you want to you think you're going to be able to convince your friends if you're not a down and dirty type of person. You're going to think you're going to be able to convince your friends that you get down and dirty. Uh, what did, what did they, where did they think that you've been? Out mountain biking? You you you, you still have training wheels on your bike. <laughs> 425. I'm, I, I don't Will this stuff sell? I have no idea. If it sells, I'm going to kick myself. Because I could have come up with that. that you know, got to start thinking outside the box, I guess, with this stuff. Four hundred and twenty-five dollars for a pair of fake dirty jeans, uh, but if you do go, well, I guess you're going to have to do that because you know, out in California, you may not, the, the state may be dictating that you can't get real down and dirty. You're going to have to get fake down and dirty, not real down and dirty, because California single payer health care bill passes first committee test. Yes. Uh, sweeping measures that would establish government-run universal health care in the state of California cleared its first legislative hurdle Wednesday. 
uh, as scores of supporters crammed into the Capitol to advocate for a single-payer system. As if California doesn't have financial, as in physical, problems already, they're going. They're set to add to their problems by trying to pass a unit. Uh, folks, if California does it, 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 there is going to be massive pressure to do this nationwide. Look, you know, hey, it's like Massachusetts when Massachusetts introduced uh, Romney Care. That was the platform and the base for Obamacare. And that was that was the jumping point for Obamacare. We got Obamacare because we got Romney care, thanks to Mitt Romney in the state of Massachusetts. So what we're going to get here is if California actually goes to this ridiculous statewide universal single payer health care system, which fits in line with the Obamacare. It's perfectly what Obamacare was actually intended to become anyway. They're going to say, yeah, go right ahead and do it. So the stakes have never been higher to get rid of Obamacare. And in you Californians, if you guys keep it. No more money for you from the federal government because you keep wasting it on crap like this. I'm just, I mean, this is ridiculous. Any, anyway, tomorrow, we'll be back here tomorrow. We're out of time for today. Back tomorrow. Tomorrow is Freedom Friday, which is basically open mic Friday. So whatever you want to discuss and a bunch of lighter stuff, we'll be here to talk about it. Until then, have a wonderful Thursday afternoon. Have fun listening to the other talking heads talk about nothing. I'm Rod Eccles. I'm out. Feels good to be a Clinton. Damn, it feels good to be a Clinton. A shameless politician always plays her cards right. Got a crew for the fight on the airwaves. Lap dogs in the press keep the mouths tight. Cause a Clinton never needs to explain what, why it is, what they done, or with who. A real Clinton knows that they're entitled, and you don't get to know what they do. What, what difference does it make? For Clinton, what's loaded in some fat apple file? A Clinton plays the victim for promotion. A Clinton kills it off with a smile. Damn, it feels good to be a Clinton. A server full of secrets ain't no thing. Damn, it feels good to be a Clinton. Nothing ever hits with a sting.